The tools on the Artisan Sculpt toolbar provide a wide variety of options for organic modeling. Unlike the Artisan Subdivision tools, which create and modify quad faces, the Sculpt tools work on triangulated faces, such as a SketchUp sandbox. If I start with a rectangle and subdivide it, then activate any Sculpt tool, I'll be asked to confirm triangulation, which then displays hidden edges. You'll want to start sculpting with a relatively high amount of subdivisions in order to get the best results. All Sculpt tools are implemented by brush strokes or by multiple clicks, and clicking any tool opens the Brush Settings window. The first tool is Sculpt Brush, and the Brush dropdown enables me to switch to a different tool, which is equivalent to switching tools on the toolbar. We'll cover symmetric modeling toward the end of the video. Also note that for each tool, you can find details in the status bar about options and modifier keys. For the Sculpt Brush, and most other Sculpt tools, there are two circles, blue on the outside for the influence radius, and shaded green on the inside, which represents the tool's strength. The radius can be adjusted with the left and right arrow keys, the square bracket keys, by scrolling the mouse wheel while holding the control key, or by adjusting the radius slider or entering an exact value. Pixels is enabled by default, which means the radius is relative to the display and remains constant at any zoom level. Turning off pixels means the radius is set by real-world units and adjusts along with the zoom. Tool strength is a percent of the radius, and for this tool controls the deformation distance. Strength can be adjusted with the up and down arrow keys, by scrolling while holding shift and control, or with the slider. For better control while modeling, the best practice is to keep the strength less than 30% and use multiple clicks or repeated brush strokes when more deformation is needed. Clicking once raises the mesh within the radius area. Increasing the strength and clicking again raises the same area higher. Bringing the strength back down, more single clicks can build upon areas already sculpted. This is the reason to avoid high strength values so that sculpting is gradual and increases with clicks or drags as needed. The orientation of the strength circle indicates the face orientation at the cursor position. Holding the shift key constrains the sculpt direction to be vertical, as indicated by the magenta circle. Clicking and dragging raises the surfaces along the dragged path, and repeated drags can build on the raised areas. As with single clicking, the default sculpt direction is normal to the surface within the brush radius, unless I use the shift key for vertical constraint. For all sculpt tools, moving the mouse slowly during brush strokes helps maintain the view refresh rate and improve accuracy. The green strength circle indicates that sculpting will go outward. Turning on invert turns this circle to red, and now sculpting will be inward. Tapping the control key toggles between invert and the default outward mode. Note that the invert option is not available for all sculpt tools. New in Artisan 2 is the ability to automatically add more edges where needed as you sculpt. Detail size controls the level of detail of sculpted faces. Reducing this value adds more edges and faces as needed for finer detail but a higher poly count. We'll discuss detail size more in depth in an advanced video. The clay brush is used for building up or subtracting volumes from a mesh in wider, flatter strips, with the strength value controlling the amount of deformation. In invert mode, I can push faces down to a uniform level. For display purposes, I can turn off edges by disabling Display Edges and still continue to sculpt. For complex models, turning off edges can help increase performance because SketchUp has less to redraw. Turning on Smooth Normals smooths the mesh appearance. Turning on Sculpt Shading automatically disables Smooth Normals and makes it easier to judge mesh depth and smoothness. I can sculpt in this mode as well and turn back on Smooth Normals. So far, we've seen how sculpting works on flat terrain surfaces, but sculpt tools can work on faces in any orientation. For this sloped face, I'll switch to Inflate either by clicking the tool, choosing Inflate from the Brush Settings drop-down, or choosing Inflate from the right-click menu. You can also assign keyboard shortcuts for the various sculpt tools, as well as other artisan tools. 
This tool is similar to the sculpt brush, but vertices move along their individual normals, causing inflation or bulging. In invert mode, this tool collapses faces. To demonstrate the grab brush, I'll work with this subdivided and smoothed box. This tool moves the clicked area of the mesh in the direction of the mouse as I drag. Faces move within the plane normal to the current view. And as the name suggests, the pinch brush deforms the mesh toward the cursor position, bringing vertices toward the center. In invert mode, deformation is away from the cursor position. The flatten brush is used to bring a set of faces to the same plane. Where I first click sets the plane, and all faces I sweep over will move to meet that plane. Holding the Shift key constrains the faces to meet the horizontal plane at the height of the point where I first click. In Invert mode, this tool moves vertices away from the clicked plane. Similarly, the Smooth brush will relax vertices to create a smoother surface, with the Strength value controlling how much the vertices move. Using Shift constrains vertices to move vertically as they are smoothed. In Invert mode, this brush causes vertices to move in random directions, resulting in a rougher surface. Smoothing can also be done while using other sculpt tools. While using the Sculpt brush on this terrain, holding the Alt key toggles on the Smooth brush. Holding both Alt and Shift will smooth faces while bringing them parallel to the horizontal plane. The Select brush is used to select faces by sweeping over them something that in some cases may be hard to do with SketchUp's native window selection. Each click or drag adds to the selected faces. I can use a large radius to select a large area, then reduce the radius for finer face selection. Holding the Shift key while clicking or sweeping will deselect. When a set of faces is selected, I can paint them all to check my selection, and use another tool such as Make Planar on all selected faces. The Select brush is also handy for selecting faces you want to isolate. There is an option on the right-click menu called Make Group and Edit, which is useful for separating the group from the model to work on separately. The Paint brush is similar to the Select brush, except that faces are painted rather than selected. The active material is defined by holding the Alt key while clicking an already painted face, and this material will be applied within the radius where I click or sweep. A larger radius helps paint many faces at once, with a smaller radius used for grabbing the rest. The Reducer brush is handy for reducing poly count. In areas where less detail is needed, I can sweep over faces to remove edges and combine faces while maintaining the existing surface. Strength controls the length of edges that can be simplified, with a low strength simplifying only tiny edges, and a high strength also simplifying larger edges. Finally, working in symmetry mode is great for character modeling and other applications. The symmetry is always along the red axis, with the green-blue plane acting as the mirror. In my example, I have a hollow box starting at the origin, with the half I want to model along the positive red axis. After subdividing and smoothing, I'll activate one of the Sculpt tools and click the Symmetry button. Symmetry constraints are described in the pop-up, and after clicking Yes to proceed, two mirrored components are created, with the original object open for editing. Now whatever I do to this component will be mirrored on the other side. Remember that symmetry is always relative to the red axis and the origin so be sure to either locate your original objects correctly or use the Axes tool prior to activating Symmetry mode to set the axes how you want. We'll go into more detail on symmetric modeling in an advanced video.